Hey, it's John from Tinderbox Arts. Uh, you know, for four or five years, I ran an automotive style uh, Garmin GPS on my motorcycle and I had no problems whatsoever. And I would read about other people having problems and I really didn't understand what the issue was. But more recently, when I upgraded the actual GPS unit itself, as well as the software on the GPS, I ran into all sorts of problems. And now I better understand uh, some of the frustration other people have expressed. So I want to go over briefly today everything I've learned about how to run these things on a bike. Some, some good news and a lot of bad news as well. All right, so the problems that I've experienced and many other people have experienced uh, come into different flavors, but they're all kind of related to the power cable that supplies power to the unit. So the issues you'll see are you're driving along and everything is fine and then error messages will pop up uh, in the middle of whatever you're doing. Some are related to, uh, they'll say power is lost and the unit will be shutting down in 15 seconds or 30 seconds, whatever it is. Um, that's uh, pretty obvious that you've lost power and if you have battery power, you can hit OK and allow it to run a battery for a little while until that runs out. Uh, but obviously that's not a long-term solution. Another issue is that you'll see an error message relating to, um, it'll say something like this accessory is not supported or similar error messages that seem to relate to the cable. Uh, some actually say this cable is not an official Garmin cable or, or words to that effect. So you'll, all these error messages are popping up and you're trying to hit, you know, okay, 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 but they keep popping back up and it, it obviously ruins the uh, experience of using a GPS if you can't actually use it. So, uh, I've actually discovered over a little bit of time and experimentation here that these error messages are related to more than one issue. So I want to break that up. Now the Garmin units come with a power cord like this uh, designed to plug into your cigarette lighter if you have a car. And if you try to run this on a motorcycle, some motorcycles already have this cigarette lighter style power um, port, if you will, uh, and you can use that, although there is a danger of this uh, shaking and, and coming loose just because motorcycles bounce around a lot and have a lot of vibration. Um, some people have used this, but more commonly people have done what I did, which was to uh, get a third party cord, which is hardwired to uh, your motorcycle power somewhere. So this part goes away. Um, there is inside this, you have to understand, some electronics uh, designed by Garmin. And this is a USB port, but it's not used in the official USB manner. Uh, there are some modifications that Garmin makes. So these electronics are necessary. When you buy the third party cords, those electronics are supposedly duplicated so that what's in here um, from Garmin is duplicated in the third party. And instead of plugging into, plugging into a, a cigarette lighter, it's hardwired, um, either directly to the battery or to another source uh, like a headlight or something like that, which is switched power. So that's all well and good. And like I said, I had that, that um, scheme and it worked fine for four or five years until recently. Now, I'm giving you an extreme close up of, I'm trying to here, I should have put this on a tripod probably, of a mini USB port. This is what it would look like. It's unsoldered obviously onto a, onto a board, but this is what it looks like. Now, the power problems that you see where it says the power cord has been, or power has been lost, I should say, is related to a physical problem with these ports. And those physical problems can vary. You'll see a lot of videos on YouTube about this, but basically this uh, port is soldered onto a circuit card inside the Garmin unit. And the solder joints, these are uh, associated with each pin in the USB port. And those solder joints can come loose, break off, and basically it's not very well made, or it's not made for a motorcycle anyway. So these ports can come loose, and that has been an issue. Um, the other problem, I'm not sure I can get this on camera, but let me turn this over. The USB connector here has these little tabs which over time can bend and those are supposed to help hold everything in place but after they've you know been used a few times especially on a motorcycle where there's a lot of vibration they tend to bend away and they don't hold the um, cord as solidly as they did before 
So these are physical issues which can plague you, and it doesn't really matter whether you're using a third-party card or a cord, I should say, or the Garmin cord. Um, either way, these physical issues can plague you. And on YouTube, you'll see a million videos about how to um, solder this more strongly in place, um, and that may be something you need to do. So if your error message is only related to um, you know, losing power, then it's probably a physical issue like you see here. Now, let's turn our attention to the other issues, which are different. The other issues relate to, as I said, um, you'll see error messages like this accessory is not supported, um, or this is not an official Garmin cord, or use the one that came with your unit, that kind of thing. So these error messages are a different problem, I believe. Um, the physical issues are power related. These other error messages are related to something else. Now, I don't, I'm not an electronics expert and I can't swear to this, but I have a strong suspicion that uh, Garmin changed the software uh, on these units so that they check more stringently what cable you're using. And I'm not even 100% sure how that works, but that's my suspicion. But my aha moment came when I saw a video. You see in this uh, standard Garmin, um, screen here, there's a battery little icon up here. If I hold my finger on that battery icon, and this is kind of a little bit of a hack, and just hold it there, after five or seven seconds, this uh, diagnostic screen pops up, which is very useful, and this made all the difference in me understanding what was going on. If you look at where it says USB device, right now it says no cable detected, all right? Right now, it's just running on battery. Now, I'm going to plug this into my third-party cable, and we'll see a difference. All right, off camera, I plugged in the cable. Now I'm just now this is a switched power, so I'm going to turn on power to my bike. Let me reach across here and watch this USB device. If I, I switched on power. Now you see that thing is changing. It says traffic antenna. And then it says generic serial, and then it says traffic antenna, and then it says generic serial. It's going to go back and forth and get confused. And I think this is the problem with those other error messages that you're getting. For whatever reason, the software is checking that cable, and it's not getting the answer that it wants. So when these things are switching back and forth like that, it gets confused. In fact, you can see this battery, uh, where it says battery here you're getting conflicting signals as well. So the software is getting confused, and that's why those error messages are popping up. As I said, I believe the older software didn't check as stringently as this does, but you know it's a problem if you have a newer unit or newer software on the unit. Now, let me plug this into the Garmin cable, and we'll look at that USB device, and we'll see something different. All right, now I've plugged in the Garmin, the standard Garmin cable that comes with it, and you'll see USB device power cable. And that'll stay solid, it'll stay charging, and nothing will change there. So that, to my eye, solves the problem of those other error messages where, you know, it, accessory not supported and, it, and it, it's the wrong cable. It sees the right cable now and it's happy. But this doesn't solve the physical problem that I showed you earlier. So <laughs> on the good news and, there's, and bad news here is the good news, yes, you can use the standard power cable. And there is a way to hardwire that too, by the way. I'll show you in a second. Um, but you know, to, to use that solves only one of the problems. The physical problem that we were having before may not be solved. So there's a downside here as well. But as long I've, I've tested this on the bike running and everything, as long as I use the standard power cable, um, this diagnostic shows me the correct cable and it's happy. All right, getting back to the cable problem. So I've determined that um, the third party cable is, a, is an issue and it didn't used to be, but it is now. So I need to get that off my bike, even though I've had it there for years and it's worked fine. The next question is, what do you do for power? So if I use the official Garmin cable, one option is to get a uh, cigarette lighter port and install that on my bike because my bike didn't have that and use that. However, I'm worried about, you know, just movement of this thing over time. Uh, there's a lot of vibration and it could work itself loose and that could give me problems. But there is a way to open this up 
it is glued together as this video showed so um, this is in two halves you can kind of see the two halves there uh, and they are glued together I did try initially uh, to try to get this apart and it was difficult but then the, the fellow on this other YouTube video showed me the right way or the best way which is to get a screwdriver into this area right here uh, this rubber cord has a little bit of play and if you jam a screwdriver in there that's the slot you need to pop the glue line and then you can work your screwdriver along that glue line to open this up when you open this up it's not uh, rocket science in there you'll find a circuit card in this area and in this area you'll see the connections for the power and everybody knows these cigarette lighter uh, ports have uh, this area right here is negative for ground and this little pin right here is positive for power so you can remove that part in fact you could physically cut off this plastic thing right here after it's apart and um, you're just gonna solder a positive and a negative wire on there and then you could use this bury it somewhere in your bike on my bike I tried to fit this with a cigarette lighter receptacle uh, in the headlight bezel where I want to put it and it just doesn't fit so I need to make this smaller and hardwire it in place so to take this apart there's a little thing right here uh, you might have different pliers that may work but you got to get in there and twist it and that will I hope there so this just comes out and in here is a fuse which probably should have but I'm probably not going to use and then that just leaves this now I'm going to take a screwdriver and try to sneak it in here and try not to slip and screw up my hand so if I move this rubber back in here there should be enough room I hope to get in there all right there's a 30 second or a minute delay there while I got my screwdriver in there so I just heard the crack so I cracked the glue and then I'm just going to go around carefully or try to be careful and crack this open but you have to break that glue line is what it comes down to I right, just been cracking this glue line I haven't taken this totally apart yet it's, it was about a minute or two off camera there just to not to waste your time I think that might be enough there so that separates the two halves and as I said you got this circuit card here which is uh, what the Garmin unit is checking against I want to be careful you know I did pry against this so I want to be careful I didn't uh, you know bugger up those wires there but basically all this unit is that you need to do is you have the negative ground right here this this part right here Let me try to get that on camera better and then the spring in the middle is the positive so I can just desolder um, this and then desolder that and put a wire here and a, and a wire there on the same on the same uh, circuit card and now I have wires that I can connect directly to the bike what this buys me is I am going to reuse this case but now with the case I can cut it off right here with a Dremel tool or something like that and then I'll only have this small area here trying to get that on camera there we are only have that small area there that uh, I need to bury in the bike and this opening right here I'll just wrap with tape or whatever all right I'm gonna try to get this on camera my soldering iron doesn't actually reach quite far enough so I'm kind of struggling here but I just need to desolder this wire here once it heats up it's probably going to be warm let's see there so I just desoldered that now I'll just desolder this pin as well from this side and this is going to get hot so I'll find a pair of pliers I can use here all right try to get another close-up here I, it just took a little fiddling to get that spring off now I've tinned this uh, wire here so the red we're going to use is positive boy the camera's like right in my way but I'm going to try to do this on camera maybe I'm not I need a third hand again yep 
Yeah, I'm not sure I like that. I might look at that again. But anyway, you're going to solder that in place and then flip this over and solder these two wires together. Where are you, camera? There you are. Solder the ground together now. All right, so we'll just get those two connected. All right, sorry to drag that on, but basically, <laughs> I, I don't pretend to be uh, the world's greatest solderer here, and this won't win me any awards, but you need to solder this positive cable here, the negative here, and we need to cover that up and protect this somehow. But once that's done, then the other side of this cable, uh, you just have a positive and negative, which you can hardwire onto your bike, again, using uh, you know a headlight circuit or something like that that is um, switched so that the GPS will come on and off when uh, you need it. And I'm going to put this back into this case. And what this buys me, though, is now I can, I'll put this back in. I'll cut off probably somewhere around here. I'll cut off. So that this cable pokes out, but this whole unit is shorter and I have more places that I can store it inside the headlight bezel. All right, so that's what it looks like all done. Uh, I cleaned up these wires a little bit, just put some tape around it to protect it. And this is just going to stick out. All this gets hidden, but I just want it to be neat enough where it's not going to come apart. And then I'll stick this other half of the case over this, uh, wrap some tape around it to keep it together. And then uh, that should be good enough. And then, like I said, I can just take the end of this cable, and now I have a place to hook up my positive and negative uh, battery or switched power, which is what I'm going to do in my case. And you should be all set. Now, again, this is only going to prevent some of the error problems from occurring. Uh, you could still have an issue on this end when that, um, you know, this mini USB doesn't get a firm fit in there or it, it vibrates loose or whatever. That can still be an issue. But this solves an awful lot of the problems and hopefully will get me most of the way there. Just to make this video a little longer. So here is my little creation here, right? Here's the other end, which I'll be able to feed through. Here's my headlight. And what I did was, um, th there's actually a parking light. It's down here. Okay, so here's the main headlamp. Here's a parking light. I'm not even sure why it's required, but it is. So I tied into that, and I need to tape up this connection here. But it's very low current draw, so I'm not worried about. You, if you want, you can tie these together and solder the wires together if you want. But it's very low current, so I'm not too worried about it. And this now will fit, believe it or not, up into my headlight bezel. And I can put the headlight back together. And now, where's my little light here? I think it's on, it's right here. So if I reach over and turn my bike on, you see the green light come on. And that tells me everything's copacetic. That's off. So that's how I'm going to wire mine up. This will solve, I believe, the software issues as far as compatibility, but you know, as I said a million times before, this still can be an issue. Uh, although the Garmin 90 degree angle is helpful, but anyway, that's about as best as I can make this, given what I know so far.